Welcome to module 16 and this module is all about API image uploads and in order to achieve this we're going to split this into two parts. This is going to be related to the API and in the next module we're going to cover the client side of this. And there's quite a lot of moving parts involved in getting an image from a client's computer up to a server that we can then retrieve that photo from and send it back to the user. So these are quite big sections. And what we're going to look at first of all is we're going to take a look at our photo storage options and we're also going to look at adding a photo accessor and this is going to be an additional service that we add to our infrastructure project. But first of all let's take a look at our different options for photo storage. There are some options. First of all we can store the photos in our database. Now this is not particularly efficient as our database is not optimized for storing files and it stores the files as blobs which is binary large objects and there's a possibility that disk space could be an issue because these photos are going to be stored as they're the size of the file and if your database server runs out of storage then you've got a problem because your database is no longer going to be able to write anything to that database. Although it does mean that authentication is easy because our application is already connected to our database. But because of the downsides of the inefficiency and the potential for a disk space issue, we're not going to use that method to store our photos. So another option we could use is the file system, which is obviously good for storing files, but we do run into the same issue about disk space. If your web server or API server runs out of space, then it's most likely going to crash your service and it'll stop working because any web server is going to need to log information to the file system and if it runs out of space then it's going to run into issues. Also by storing our files on the file system then we would need to give our web service permission to write to this file system as well and this is opening up another avenue for attack by giving write permissions onto your server even though you can lock down file permissions, it is another thing to think about. And for that reason, we're not going to use the file system to store our photos. What we are going to use is a cloud service. And the cloud service we're going to use for this is Cloudinary because it does provide us with an API key and an API secret. And we can make sure our users are authenticated with our API before we allow them to upload the photo to Cloudinary. And because we're uploading it to a cloud service, then we do not need to worry about disk space. And it's very, very scalable. And because it's a service that's specialized in delivering files over a distributed network, then it's potentially faster than how we can serve them ourselves. But there is always a price. And this method could be more expensive depending on your usage. The service that we're going to use has a very generous free tier. It doesn't require billing, it doesn't require a credit card, and it gives us plenty of space to work with, certainly to test and demonstrate this application. So that's the option we're going with. And just to give you a picture of the architecture we're going for here, we're going to be using our infrastructure project and we're going to create a photo accessor, which is going to contain methods to upload and download images directly to Cloudinary. Now our handler is going to know nothing about Cloudinary. So our application logic is going to be confined to what's going on between the application and our database. And there'll be an interface that it uses to upload the photo. It will get a response back from our photo accessor. And it's the details from that response it's going to save in our database. And then return the object to the API controller to return it to the client. So that's what we're aiming for and just to give you a picture of the relationship and where we stand at the moment or after this particular section where we will stand in terms of the relationships between our different tables. Now this is looking quite busy because it also includes all of the identity tables as well in this relationship diagram but we're not so interested in that just now. What we're interested in is the relationship between our users and our photos and our users is going to have a one-to-many relationship with our photos so each user can have many photos. So for the particular section we're in, the API section, 
The before picture is a waste of time because we simply don't have the ability to send photos. But if we take a look at what we're aiming for here, what we're going to be able to do is after we've logged in, we're going to be able to choose a file to upload, pick an image, and then send it via Postman in this example up to Cloudinary. And then we're going to get a response back from Cloudinary to our client. And this gives us a download URL of where we can retrieve this photo from. And we'll also be looking at our profiles as well here and looking at the images we're sending back with our user objects as well. So quite a bit of work to do in this particular section and let's begin.